Hi, in this slide I want to look at a uh, more detailed description of what service value is. In previous slides with the augmented product, we've talked about basic expected service or services, but now I want to start digging into what are the specific service element slash metrics that we can measure and what's their logical value priority as far as a customer would be concerned. Uh, in past slides, when we talked about supply chain math, we pointed out that, that the number one reason that distributors exist is to provide hub economics uh, for both sides of the fence, the suppliers and the customers. On the customer side, we lower their total procurement costs by having, uh, ideally, the one one best stop shop, <laughs> most robust one stop shop in stock because local fill rates uh, on a timely delivery on a timely basis keeps the customer up to, uh, up and doing what they need to be doing uh, or well, the flip side would be downtime for lack of the product. So to say, I have zero errors, I have on-time delivery, I have wonderful people, but I don't have what you want in stock today is sort of an empty service va value proposition. So I would really say this is the logically the number one most valuable thing that we can provide for customers. Um, over here in this box, I've said unconditionally guaranteed because uh, there are certainly large customers that may say, you know, there's some items for us that are so critical that if you don't have them, the downtime costs are so egregious, so huge, uh, we can't tolerate. So you have to unconditionally have these in stock whether we need them or not. Once we have the stuff, the second logical thing would be, can we execute flawlessly? In other words, if I can get it on time and I got a great price, but oh, by the way, it's the wrong item. And so now you have downtime, et cetera. That's sort of an empty promise. So um, have the stuff, execute perfectly. Then we can worry about timeliness. Now, as far as timeliness, both response time and, 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 and how quickly we deliver it, that will totally vary by the different niche. Uh, so we have to ask them, you know, how late do you want to be able to buy it and how quickly do you want to get it um, and, in, and find out that those things will vary by the niche. There's a sleeper I've, I've inserted here, both heroic acts and heroic recoveries between three and four. Um, you know, normally we think about basics, but if a customer calls up and says, oh, I have an unusual problem. I've never had it before. Could you help me with it? And maybe we can because when you have hundreds of customers, you know, the same unusual problem can come up two or three or four times. Um, but will we bust our buns to go do an extra effort? Yes or no. I mean, if the customer's a minnow and we're already losing money on them, why should we do something extra for free? Um, conversely, if the customer is this huge, super profitable, fast growing gazelle, we should all everybody top to bottom should know that and the answer is yes take care of them on a, on a, on a spontaneous heroic act basis as far as recoveries um, if we if we make a mistake up here at number two better clear up some of this stuff if we make a mistake um, now the customer you know they sort of take perfect service for granted and they're just sort of unconscious about everything but if we make a mistake then all of a sudden they consciously are looking at us saying you know what you made a mistake and I got a problem what are you going to do about it and that's when it's very important from a total mass psychology viewpoint to do what's called a heroic recovery and there's a slide on this later on that you can check out um, so those are very important um, then comes price and terms if we got a low price, but any of these things up above are missing, that is bargain price. There's real price servings, but the cost of lousy service exceeds the price savings, so we're not interested. This is why I can say that 90% of customers out there who are saying, hey, here's last look, they're not true price buyers. What they've done is narrowed the auction down to two or three people who all do pretty well at, at numbers one through three. Uh, and then on top of that, they're, they're trying to keep us honest on price. Now we're going to get to a very contentious thing, which is that what is the value of the inside salesperson in the formula, and what is the value of the outside salesperson in the formula? Maybe I should also just address this. Basically, there could be other miscellaneous services that actually are critical for one given niche, but they can vary all over the map based on the niche, and we may look at some case stories later on in the, uh, the whole service excellence section, but historically, You'll notice that the outside salesperson 
based on an annual survey that the American Management Association used to do, uh, was the number one reason that somebody would buy from a company in 1970. Now, think of the time in 1970, uh, there were no computers. So if you had any question issue problem, the outside salesperson was the only one that loved you and cared, cared enough that if you gave them the problem, they'd go figure, do all the manual research, figure out what the answer was and get back to you. Also, in 1970, looking through the rearview mirror for the last 20 years, from 1915 to 1970, there were chronic shortages of, 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 of allocated goods that were exclusively available from those particular organizations. So the outside salesperson was helping the buyer get X allotment, if you will, to keep their business going. So that created a lot of loyalty to the sales rep. What happens when the shortages disappear and it's chronically in excess supply, all the products are excessively equal, you get the same brands from multiple people, and computers are so good that 24-7, 365, I can get on the internet and I can find out anything I want. I don't have to call the inside salespeople. But you'll notice that the inside salespeople have, have stayed above outside salespeople on average. There are always exceptions. Because again, if I call these people with the power of database software, they have all kinds of answers and things they can take care of right away. And whereas I can't really even find this person if they're not tethered to the database, they wouldn't know. Now notice these little arrows, this is very critical. What we want to do is work with all of our inside salespeople and all of our outside salespeople to say, hey, how do we define what top five, 10 percentile performers for our job niche are? How do we continuously improve to become that so we can get last look and a little bit more for our own individual value added? So that puts us above the price issue here so that we're getting last look and a point for the outside rep and last look for a point for the inside sales and service horse that we're, we're providing. So this is a first general introduction and in going deeper now into how do we define service excellence? How do we start to measure to achieve it and, and make it uh, distinctively brilliant one niche at a time? Thank you.